Hey, I'm Jessica with Sweetbriar Sisters, and today we're going to make Patty the Penguin. This pattern goes up really great in just about any fabric. If you're just starting, I'd suggest a cotton because it's the easiest to work with. This that I'm using is a minky, which is um, just that really soft fur material. Uh, but again, you can use just about whatever you want, so use whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, we're going to get started by cutting out our pattern pieces. So, uh, with some paper scissors, which are different than my sewing scissors, I'm just going to cut out the pattern pieces. So here's the body. And you just can rough cut it. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, now on, on these pieces, they're a little different. You'll notice they have a dotted line in here. Um, that's because they're a little smaller and sometimes people don't really like working with small pieces. So I'm going to show you guys a trick uh, to work with small pieces. So um, to use the trick, you'll cut your um, pieces right on that dotted line. If you just want to sew them traditionally, you can, sew, you can cut them on the solid line, this line out here, and then just sew them like normal. But for the trick, you got to do the dotted line. All right, I've got all of my pattern pieces cut out. Um, these ones that I cut on the dotted line, I cut right exactly on the dotted line. This one on the on the body piece, it doesn't matter because we can cut it more exact right now. So, to cut out your body piece, you need three pieces cut out of black and one from white. So, whenever you are sewing. Um, a toy pattern, you want to make sure of a few things. First of all, if your fabric has a nap, you need to pay attention to that. A nap is if you, if you brush it this way, it looks one way, and if you brush it this way, it kind of smooths down so it looks a different, has a different look to it. That's your nap. You want to make sure that all of your pieces have the nap going the same way. So right now, I want to turn this over so my nap's going down. So when you brush it, it li brush it down, it lies nice and flat. And then I am going to cut my body pieces. So I've got my, my body pieces. I need to cut three out of black. Because my nap is going down like this, um, if I fold my fabric this way, I can cut two out at the same time and know that the nap is going the right way because it's going down even after I folded it. So I'll go ahead and pin my piece and cut that out. All right, we've got two of our black pieces cut out, and now we need to go ahead and get one more black piece and a white piece cut. So, again, I'm gonna feel for that nap. I'm gonna see, make sure it's going down. Right, it's going down. And then I'm gonna take my white so we can cut two things at a time, make sure that nap is going down and we'll put them together so both naps are going down and we'll put this piece here pin it on and then cut both of those out too all right now we're going to work on our small pieces and this is the part that's the little trick i told you about earlier so if you cut your small pieces out on the dotted line <clears throat> that's the sewing line Typically, um, like on the body piece here, your piece is a little bigger. It includes a um, what's called an inseam. And so uh, you'll cut your piece big and then you're really gonna sew it in here. Um, so usually the pieces would include that. Uh, just to, um, for this trick, these pieces um, don't after you cut them on the dotted line. So what you're gonna do is you'll take one of your pieces that's cut on the sewing line and then you'll take some larger scraps of fabric or if you don't have scraps you can just do a big piece and then cut it down afterwards and what you'll do is so the beak needs to have two pieces cut from two 
So what we'll do first, of course, I'm looking for my nap. If you're using cotton, it doesn't, you don't have to worry about this so much. That's one reason why it's so much easier to work with. But I wanna make sure my nap is going down. And I'm going to trace this piece right on the back of my fabric. All right. Now, the piece says that you need two pieces of yellow to make the beak. So what we're gonna do, that we just trace the sewing line. We, know, we now know that we need two pieces. So we'll take the second piece and we'll put it right under there. And I'm not gonna cut these out yet. So what you'll do is you'll pin them together and make sure that the right sides are together and the nap's going the right way if, you're, if your fabric has a nap. And you'll take this to the sewing machine and you'll just sew right exactly on the line. And you'll leave this top part open for um, turning. So I'm not gonna cut yet, I'm gonna wait until I have sewn this part on the sewing machine to cut. So I'm just gonna set this aside and I'm gonna keep going. So my beak is done. Now I need flippers. So we'll need four of those total. So there's two flippers and you need four because there's two pieces on each flipper, each of the two flippers. So we've got some yellow scraps and this one I'm gonna cut in half. So I have two. So I've got four scraps. We know we need four flippers. And what we're gonna do, make sure your nap is going down. I'll just, I'm just gonna set them so the nap's going down on all of them. And then flip them. And again, we'll trace it right onto the back of the fabric. On there. And we know that this needs two pieces, so we're gonna match that up with that and pin it. All right, and then when I take this to my sewing machine, I'll just sew right exactly on that line and leave this top part open again, just like the beak. And for our second flipper, we'll just do the same thing. When you leave these pieces larger, it helps to give you something to grab hold of with your fingers uh, when you're at the sewing machine. It also really helps because sometimes with the small pieces, they get stuck. That bottom part of your sewing machine is called the feed dogs. And Sometimes the little pieces get stuck in your feed dogs and they're just kind of annoying to work with. So this kind of gives you your machine a little bit more to grab while you work with it. So we've got the flippers all cut out. Now we're gonna do the wings. The wings are the same way. The only difference is instead of the same color on both sides, there's a white side and a black side. So we've got some black scraps. I'm gonna put all of the um, nap so it's going down and some white scraps, putting the, the nap so it goes down. All right, I'm gonna turn my whites over. White's easier to trace on. And I'm gonna trace one wing here. And then pin it on black right there. And put it aside. Now, this is the only one other thing you have to pay attention to. So typically when you cut two pieces on a pattern piece out when you're sewing toys, what you'd normally do is you'd fold the fabric in half and cut them at the same time. And then when you open it up, it gives you a mirror image. Um, so two pieces that are mirror images of each other. Now, because we're not cutting these out at the same time, like we typically would, um, to do this last wing, instead of tracing it, um, let me make sure my nap's still down. It's not, okay. Instead of tracing it like this, like normal, you wanna just turn it over so it's the mirror image and trace that. And this is the only one you have to worry about because the other ones are um, the same on both sides. So you, you don't have to worry about mirror images because they're, the mirror image is the same as the normal image. All right, so we've got our mirror image of the wing like this and we'll pin that and just so you can get a double look to make sure you did all of yours right here are my two wings see how they're facing different ways and then my flippers and my beak piece 
and I'll show you how to just sew all of those in just a second. All right, we're ready to trace our placement lines onto our body pieces. I've got my body pattern piece and I've got my instructions. The instructions are gonna show us um, which of these placement lines to trace onto which um, pattern piece. So we'll start at the end. Uh, we have the right wing, um, which it's the penguin's right instead of our right. That's why it looks a little confusing, but the right wing line is this one right here. And so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to mark that. Um, and I'm going to mark it on the right side of my fabric. So the fuzzy side is up. Um, now, if you have are working with cotton, you could probably just hold this up to the window like this, just like this, and just trace it right on and see it right through. Since this fabric is really thick, it's hard to do that. So I'm going to just show you how I work with that. Um, I just put my finger on the end of this line, and I know it ends right there. And I make a little mark, and this marker just barely shows up on this fabric so it's going to be hard for you to see it but I can see it and hopefully that will be good enough and then I'll do the same thing I'll mark this end mark it here and then you just connect the dots right there and this line is just going to be right where we put the wing later on I'm going to go ahead and move on so this is the middle piece it will have the face on it so again, I'm just going to mark where it stops and ends for the eyes. And hopefully that'll go through. Yep, that goes through enough. So then I can just connect the dots there and there. Okay, and then we'll also do the beak. So I'll do the center and the ends. Just kind of make some dots that go through and then we'll just connect those. All right, there's his face. And then last of all, I'm going to do the left wing on here. All right. Now we're ready to sew. All right, we're gonna start sewing the wings. As you will recall, we have these pieces, white on top, black on bottom, with the sewing line traced right here. I'm gonna take the pin out, and I'm gonna just start right here, and I'm gonna go around. And at the end of each, um, well, at each end of the line, I'm going to backstitch, which will help the seam hold together. And as you go around the curves, they're pretty sharp, so just put your, your needle down and turn your fabric. It's still a little piece, even though we have it on a big piece of fabric, so don't feel bad if you, you gotta go slow around these curves. All right, I've reached the top again. I'm gonna go ahead and backstitch. All right. So, you'll see I started at one end of the top and went around to the other end. I backstitched on both sides and I left the top open. Now I'm gonna go ahead and trim around what I just sewed. You'll want to trim leaving about a quarter of an inch around the line that you traced. So you'll just trim right around there. There we go. Get rid of that extra bulk. And when you turn it, you'll see we just have our normal little wing, but we never had to sew with any little teeny tiny pieces of fabric. I'm going to go ahead and do that with the second wing too. All right, so I've sewed both of my wings. You'll see that they're mirror images of each other. And um, I clipped my curves. Just clipping your curves mean before you turn it inside out. You just um, clip it so that it's, it's nice and close. There's just not a lot of um, 
extra bulk around your curve. And then also on the tight spots, you can kind of go like this to kind of um, just let your seam get the right shape that it needs to when you turn it right side out. Um, these picked, the, the best part about sewing toys is that if you don't do that part perfectly, it just adds a little character. It's not going to ruin it if you don't do that. So that's just a little something you can learn, but no big deal if you don't do it. All right, so we've got this, and um, you want to press this with your iron just like that. And then what you'll do is you'll turn this in just a quarter of an inch like that. And then you'll press that um, on your iron too so that it stays cl closed. And you'll do that on both wings. All right, now we're ready to sew our wings onto the placement guides that we marked before. Mine weren't showing up very well in the video, so I marked them. This is just a pin, so you don't have to do that. I just did it so you could see where my lines are. So you've got two wings, and um, both of them still have their top ends that are open, but they're, um, they're ironed down to turn in, so the raw edges aren't showing anymore. And remember how we have two mirror images of each other? What you'll want to do to find the right wing placement is you want to put the raw edges to the top. So that's what I'm holding on to with my fingers. And you'll notice that on each of these, there's a point that's kind of higher and then a point that's lower. You want to put the two higher points together like this. And then if you have your body pieces laid out like they were on the pattern piece, so you've got your face and then the, the, um, the side is the side for the right wing and this is the side for the left wing. So you've got your wings facing each other. You just keep them that way and then you line up this edge with your placement guide. And again, I'll line up this, the raw edge, with the placement guide. And that is how they fit onto the pieces. And you'll just go ahead with your machine and you'll sew right on top of those. Make sure that your raw edge stays closed where you uh, ironed it. And be sure to um, backstitch on both sides of your seam so it's nice and strong. I've got one wing on and I'll go ahead and do the same thing with the second wing. Now I'm going to make my beak and um, this one is just like how we did the wings. So with these two big pieces together, I'll start here and then here, leave this top line open and remember to backstitch at the beginning of both, both ends of the seam. All right, and again, I'm just gonna go ahead and trim a quarter inch from the line that I traced. And then, because this is a little piece, you can trim the corners a little bit. Just make sure you don't cut where you sewed, and then trim a little bit more, just anywhere where the, the seam is a little bulky. And then you can go ahead and turn it and you'll, you'll press this on your, your iron, with your iron, and then again, just um, fold that in. And it's a little, little finicky, especially with Minky, but you fold it in so there's no raw edge, and then you press, you press that with your iron, and then we'll be ready to sew it on to your penguin. All right, I'm ready to sew my penguin beak onto the face. So I've got my penguin face that's marked with my placement guides. I've got some yellow embroidery floss in a sewing needle and I've got my pressed beak. Um, I went ahead and knotted my embroidery floss and brought it through um, just the bottom of the beak placement guide. And then I'm gonna go ahead and sew on 
the beak. So you'll just go through the beak, make sure that the edges are still turned in, go through and then go back down. Make sure you stay on the line, up through the line, through the beak. back down through the line. And then we'll turn it over and tie it off. Cut your thread. All right, now I'm gonna sew on the eyes. I've got the beak attached. I've got some black embroidery floss knotted at the end. And I'm just gonna go up from the bottom of one of the eye placements pull through till the knot catches, and then go up through the top. And um, I think I'll probably do that twice, just to make sure the eyes show really well. So I'll do that again, just from the bottom, back up to the top. All right, that's looking good. So now I'm just gonna go over to the next one. Don't even have to tie off. You just go up to the bottom, from the bottom, up to the top. Make sure on this one you don't pull too tight so that your fabric bunches. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do that again. And then I'll tie off on the back, just like on the beak. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and sew the flippers the same way that we did the beak and the wings. So we'll just sew around here and cut it down. Then I'll turn these, I'll press them flat, press them flat like this, and then turn in the bottom and press that in. All right, now I'm getting ready to sew my body piece, my body all together. So I've laid out my pattern pieces. Um, this is the back right here, it doesn't have the wing. So then we've got the body piece, the left wing, and the right wing. So what we're going to do is we'll take these two pieces and we'll put them right sides together with the wing piece on top. Then we'll take these last two pieces, put them right sides together with the wing on top. And with both the keeping the wings on tops, I'm going to go through and I'm going to sew down the right side of these pieces from there to there. And then on this one from here to here. All right, now I've got my two halves of my penguin. I'm gonna put them right sides together, match the seams on top, and I'll put a pin there. So match the seam on top, best you can, and on bottom. And then fit the right sides together. And I'm gonna just go around and sew all the way around and I'll leave an opening right here on the bottom to stuff. All right, there it is. I'll just turn it right side out. And with that step, we are done with all of the machine sewing. 
All right, we're ready to stuff our penguin. I've got my opening in the bottom here. I like to keep my opening big enough for at least a couple of my fingers to go through, but not too big because you have to hand sew it at the end. That takes time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stuff him. All right, I've got my penguin almost all the way stuffed. He's got about a quarter of him to about right here. Um, it's stuffed with, with um, fiber fill. And I'm gonna stuff the rest of him with poly pellets. I'm using about a half of a cup of these. And they're a little hard to get in. Uh, if you have a funnel in your kitchen, that helps a lot. In case you don't, most people do have some sort of a measuring cup with um, a good pouring spout. And what you'll do is um, you'll just, I like to kind of shove down the polyfill, the fiber fill as much as possible. So there's a big open space there and then pour it in nice and slow. And we just got a tiny bit in right there. Then just shove it down with your finger and just keep, keep doing that over and over. So you got it full. There we go, that's a better, better bit. All right, I've got Patty all filled with my poly pellets. Now I've just gotta sew up the seam to make it a little easier with the poly pellets so they don't come out while you're hand stitching. I like to take a little bit of fiber fill and put it over the poly pellets so they don't come out while you're stitching your steam seam. I've got my fiber fill in there to keep my poly pellets in. I'm gonna stitch him closed with a ladder stitch. Here's how you do it. I've got my, my thread knotted and I pulled it in so that it, the knot is stuck underneath the fabric. And I'm gonna fold the edges of my fabric so the, there's no raw edges, so it's a fold edge against a fold edge. And I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna go on the right side in and out and then over to the left side in and out and then to the other side as you do this it creates an invisible stitch invisible enough that you will notice i am sewing with white thread on black fabric and you can't even see it given it's minky minky kind of covers your thread a little bit more than other fabrics but you can get away with a lot with this stitch because it's an invisible stitch All right, I'm to the end of my opening. I'm gonna go ahead and knot off. But then instead of just being done, because this is a kid's toy, I'm gonna go ahead and sew the opening one more time the other way. Just to make sure that those poly pellets have the best chance of staying inside the penguin as possible. So here I go the other way. I've sewn down again, down the opening for the second time. And so I'll knot again. And I'm gonna sink my thread. Instead of having just a tail hanging out, you tie your knot and you take your thread, you put it right, your needle right next to the knot, and then you pull it out a little bit farther down. You pull your thread through, and then when you trim your thread, it leaves the tail of your thread inside of the animal. So you don't have one, a little tail hanging out. It's time to put Patty's flippers on. So we're gonna stand them up. And then I've got both flippers. The, um, the open edges are pressed in so there's no raw edges showing. I'm gonna line them up um, to the lines right where the black and white meet. And then I'm gonna just tuck them under Patty, just enough that they're underneath him but that his little feet are still showing. So where that is, I'll just keep that and then I'll go ahead and sew on one. And while you do this, you're sewing close the open, the open edge, so that's nice.
Here we go again with the second one. So line it up with the white and black, put it under, make sure it matches the other flipper and turn them over and sew it on. All right, last of all, we've just got a scarf. I have a piece of fabric that is 18 inches by one inch, one inch. Um, and this fabric, we're not gonna finish the edges, so you wanna make sure to get something that doesn't fray. I'm using minky, so that works. You can use um, fleece or felt or um, a lot of, well, some knits don't fray, just depending on what you do. Um, I like to kind of pull it tight and that makes the fabric kind of go into a circle. So then it's kind of like a circle scarf. And after I pulled it tight into a circle, I'll put it around his neck and tie it. And um, you can tie it however you want. I just do a single tie because I think it looks cuter and then I end up sewing it in place anyway. So I just did a single tie and I'm gonna just take some normal thread with a knot at the end and I'm just going to um, sew it in place so that we don't lose the scarf because a lot of times the accessories get lost on toys. So this will make sure we keep it. Mm, just put a few stitches in there. and then tie it off. And sink your thread. And that'll keep your knot right in place. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the back too so that it um, doesn't, cause right now you can kind of move it around and I want it to just stay right where I want it. So I'll go in and I like to come in through the back so the knot's hidden and then just put a couple stitches in there and that'll make it so it won't go anywhere. And then I'll come back through in between the scarf and the neck to do another knot so that it's hidden as well. Now your scarf stays in place when it's played with. So now we'll just look at the scarf and the length of it is your own decision. I like to make it cut off probably right around at the toes. So you'll just trim it so that everything's even. Maybe trim that a little bit more. And then you can either leave it like that or if you want some fringe, you can go ahead and just snip some fringe in there. 